Okay, good evening everybody. Um, I think tonight's topic is maybe even a little bit close to home for some. But for for others, um, you know, take it like you want to. But but I was I was taught a long time ago, I remember when I first got involved with rail that uh You need to tell a person, an addict, the world, anything, your view and and uh, and your truth. So, you know, a lot of times, sometimes people don't like hearing the truth. And um, and that's called denial. You know, all, all the effects that, that addiction has on, on addicts, mm -hmm. I promise you, those are all human traits. How's it, everybody? How's it, Clutchy, Andrew? The usual uh, live click. Good to see you guys. And all these traits are, are, are exaggerated human traits at any given time. Now, what I'm going to speak about tonight is like, how do you know an addict is an addict? Or what do you determine as an addict? I remember years ago, my the, the, the first cliche that stood out for me was always Mr. Hall saying that, uh, remove the stigma. And that means like, to me, it means what's the difference between an addict that doesn't pay his rent and a, another person that doesn't pay their rent? Um, you know what, what what happens then is, ah, he's an addict from us. That's why he doesn't pay his rent. So addiction always pops up when you make wrongs or, or things like that, <clears throat> which I disagree with totally. Because, yes, of course, you take your own inventory, <clears throat> but if I, look at my, if I look at my past, today I can sit here and I can speak about my past. I can speak about my wrongs. I can speak about how I can take corrective measures mm -hmm. going forward on them, and, um, and I can admit to my mistakes, and I can admit to my wrongdoings. And, um, you know, if anything, with... With this famous cliche, what rail stands for removing the stigma is, if anything, by Mr. Hall implementing that, that is what got my confidence up high again. That is what restored my self self esteem as a human being, removing the stigma. Because I don't know if people know what it's like to to walk around clean and sober, like every other human being, you've got your faults, you've got your past, we all have pasts, addicts or not, but you know what, what I always tell the guys in the center is that at least you sitting here doing something about it, man, you know, uh, that was, that was the biggest cliche for me, I'll never forget the way that, 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 uh, that Mr. Hall started rail, started saving one person at a time like myself and and that was i would see his blue bucky coming on from far away and it would say on the addict in transist proud to be an addict because there's people in the world that do things that are worse than what addicts do man and uh i can name i can mention all the things that i've done mm -hmm. That won't get vindictive people into the mood for locking me up. I can admit to it all. I've burnt down butcheries. I've been involved with with uh, with car breakings, house breakings. Okay, I wasn't involved in house breakings. I used to house break myself. But uh, and not using the drugs as an excuse. But was I really a bad person, or was I fueling something inside me that I had no control over anymore? So I want everybody to, first of all, we can start off with a question, who am I? Because who is an addict? Is an addict a person that's standing at the robots with broken clothes? Is an addict a person that's earning 30 grand a month paying all his bills? In an empty house? Dragging out 30 grand a month? 
Because what's the difference between that addict that's wearing name brand clothes, phoning his parents or whoever it is, or conning them out of money all the time? What's the difference between that addict and what is the difference between a person that doesn't do drugs, that does that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll take the addict side because the addict has an excuse for his behavior. An addict has an excuse for his behavior. I can tell you now, at the age of 20, I had every, every card available to mankind. It was RCS, it was Woolworths, Truworths, Edgars. You see, I can go down the line, eh? I don't even remember them all. And easy to get the cards... And lack it to open your wallet and the people can check all these cards. But being stupid at the time. Only the stupid people would realize that this oak is just um, bragging up skilt. That's what we call it, uh, call it in Cape Town. But today I want to challenge people, man. And yes, for sure. I used to make a lot of debt, sell my things that I buy on my cards, mm -hmm. and then uh, get new stuff on the cards, and then people scheme, hey, this ace getting an upgrade, he must be doing well. Buy name brand clothes on, on the, all the cards, eventually get blacklisted, nowhere to turn to, can't make loans anymore. Mm -hmm. So now all this behavior that I'm talking about, at least I got my addiction to blame on it, man. At least there was something that if I didn't put in my body, I didn't know how to live with or without it anymore. Now people that do this stuff without drugs, we always tell the people that come into the recovery center that, that you recover automatically from the drugs. But you need to cover from doings, lifestyle, and everything else that goes with it. Before and after the drugs. Because something needed to set inside of me that there was something wrong with a person. Which is a very long time ago, I must, I must, I must admit. Because I'm admitting my faults here. Like many people can't do. Is... What is my excuse for all of that? And, and that's why I implore all these people that, that are watching this evening, that share this message. Why is it so easy to always throw addiction in the equation? When somebody doesn't do something, exactly the same as a person that's never touched drugs, does exactly the same thing, also makes loans and doesn't pay it back. Also cons people into saying, I'll pay the end of the month. By my own admission, I can say that I was full of drugs for a long time. And, I, and in that time, it made me a less of a father than, than what I could have been. But given the circumstances, if I really be honest with myself. Arrogance aside. Given the circumstances, my self-inflicted circumstances of starting off and putting drugs in my body. You know, maybe being lured into it just by the, by the system of the, the way the world works. Maybe making the choice to pick it up. Who knows how it all started. But at the end of the day, it was my responsibility not only to end the drugs, but to end the behavior. I missed birthdays. I missed functions. I missed celebrations. The only thing that I didn't really miss was funerals. Because I had a lot of friends that were addicts that aren't here anymore today. And maybe at the time I was sick enough that the motive was partly saying bye. Maybe I was even sick enough that the motive was that I knew that the other half of the dry click would be there. You know, but what defines an addict? What defines an addict? I'm rolling bulky tonight. You can see. I had to go to the shop unshaven. 
People whisper under their breath, Yare, look what he looks like. He must have relapsed. What makes a non-addict a better person than me when they're doing all the same stuff as me? What improvement? Yes, for sure, I got the time out to go to a recovery center. But I want you guys to comment maybe there, the people that don't know the answers. Because there isn't only one answer. It's all opinionated here. We all got our own opinions. So I, I fill my, my, my body with drugs. I pay all my bills. I do my kids' homework with them. I, I got all the ticks in the boxes of, of what's expected of being a good person. But I drag myself in a coma every day. But I still function. So who's the better person? Who is the better person? The person that's doing all these good things and filling themselves with drugs? Or the person that, that, that claims to be in recovery or that's had a bit of a up and down with drugs but nothing else has changed in their life? They crash cars. They hang on their parents' back. They make false fucking promises. Don't, aren't they a little bit sick as well? You know, I, I, I very humbly say that 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 uh, that has taken me long time, a long time. Maybe I'm a slow learner. Maybe the the drugs took away a couple of brain cells. But it's taken me a very long time. All I wanted to do was get life right. That's true, must all. And I've seen it over the years. The, most of the people that, that get recovery for free, get it easy, and get all the necessities of, of life, not even the recovery part that you pay 80,000 Rand for 21 days, at other places, which should be shut down, unless you can show me results that come out of there. But there is a couple of exceptions that get sponsored and who's, who's worse? The family filling the money, the, 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 the tuck shop account with, with tuck shop money or the family that is, that is pulling up in a Merc with Woolworths packets to a sponsored person when somebody else is clothing their son, toiletries, Three meals plus a day, never less than three meals. The guys that have had it the hardest on the rail farm, and when I say the hardest, it's not really that hard. I'm talking about now no visits, not many visits, not much extra tuck shop monies, got his meals a, a day. Has he set amount of things to work with? So now who's the who's the better person here? The oak in recovery that's driving a skadonk that that uh, that he doesn't have, have money to roadworthy because he's throwing in his his petrol money to get to recovery meetings and carry the message? Or the oak that is claiming or meant to be sober that's never touched drugs in his life, but that acts worse than a drug addict. Riding around in mommy and daddy's car that uh, has put maybe a chip on his shoulder or her shoulder. So, so as I was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's taken me many years. Maybe I'm a slow learner. It's taken me rises and falls and things like that. But there's no shortcuts in recovery, man. There's no shortcuts in life. Everything that I did, getting the easy way out. I was short-lived. And I was taught this 
many years ago in, in recovery, one of my recovery attempts through Mr. Hall, where we, where we would be able to go to the different meetings that, um, that rail started mm -hmm. off running and, uh, yeah, definitely Isabel, don't forget about all the lies. So when a exactly Isabel, when a when an addict lies, then he's like a most drug addict. When a normal person lies, let's just do nothing about it. So what defines an ugly person? And can a person that's never done drugs before suffer from dry drunk syndrome. We all know what that is, huh? That's white knuckling. That is uh, all the traits of, of, of the only thing that's different is the drugs are done. But you still lie, you still manipulate, you still con, you still steal. So there isn't, there isn't a way to to take shortcuts in, in all of this. You know, and, and and like I was saying that maybe I wasn't a bad man. Maybe I was a sick man. Maybe there was just that little bit of pride that was left in me To not stand at the robots, but to rather break in houses. Now, does that make me a better addict than the man standing at the robots? And to get it all right, it, it, it's a long process. I think over the over the years of my rises and falls is always that the most I've seen, the most addicts I've seen fall, and I've been in a lot of recovery centers. I've been in correctional facilities. I've lived with addicts. I've obviously drugged with addicts. And... Um, and I know addicts roll and operate. I know that they'll eat you up, spit you out, pick up the pieces that they spat out, chew it a little bit more, spit it out again, and then make sure they've spat it somewhere where somebody else can walk over it. But we see a great deal of people all the time, all the time, that do all these things that addicts do, that have never touched drugs in their life. You know, a genuine addict in recovery, if they work as a receptionist, a genuine a addict that is really in real, hardcore, firm, straight, non-compromising recovery, that works as a receptionist won't even make a scullum phone call that, that isn't a business call. Because at the end of, of the day, they'd have to retire at night and ask themselves, have I been honest in all my affairs today? Where is it that I've been wrong and that I have to make right? You know, so that is my biggest question to, to everybody this evening is that Who is an addict? How do you define an addict? Is it when the money runs out that you become an addict? When your finances can't, uh, when your finances can't, can't support the drug habit anymore? Is it when you, when you start hurting people and yourself?
because why would that make you an addict? I know I know a couple of couple of addicts that um, that have houses up on the hill, or or one specifically that has a house up on the hill that makes a lot of money that uses plenty drugs, even gives to the poor. But he's an addict. I know lots of people that that still have their cars, that still take their kids to school. There's many people riding around this neighborhood, man, that have alcohol problems, that have drug problems. But they've got an excuse. I ask everybody tonight, what excuse have you got that is not an addict? Why is it okay for you to say, oh, I'm only human, I make mistakes? Why have I been outcasted so many places in my life after it was known that that I steal people's things, I do drugs, and I've done bad things. I sit here today, by the grace of God, of course, and by the way, Rail has taught me to do things the right way. And I don't think that I'm doing too bad. I've got things... I've got things in my life that most people work their whole life to achieve that I've gotten in a very short time being em employed and and doing things the right way through the program at, at Rail. I've got things that people work their whole lives for. And I've spent just about my whole lifetime on drugs. Getting, using and finding ways and means and people and things to get more. Hurting people. Destroying anything in my path. But that's what I was. Is that how you're going to look at me for the rest of my life? We're all human, man. We're all human. And how's it, Kaleen? And uh, so we automatically recover from the physical part of the of the drugs. We recover from putting the drugs into our body when we come into the doors of a rehab. When the O's walking through the gates at rail. You start recovering from the time that that last drug has went into your body. So then sometimes there's a, there's a, there's a little bit of nitty gritty. You know, a lot of males in one place. It, it can. There's never fighting on the farm because we lock oaks up if they fight. So they either leave in a van or ambulance. Okay, ambulance if they try and fight with us. But... Uh, but it's a criminal offense. The Oaks know that they mustn't steal. But like any place, we have our normal human nature based things. And uh, we always tell the guys, you know, when you when you walked in, or the day before you walked in, when you were full of drugs, you had an excuse for this behavior. Because you were under the influence. But now you don't have an excuse for this behavior anymore. How do you as a parent... Or a loved one, or somebody that is connected to a drug addict, expect them to live a better life when you are busy with Schnei. When you are busy cutting corners. It's the, it's the classic example of, uh, of the counselor that's never touched drugs trying to tell me how to go through my cold turkey. 
sit in the waiting line over there and uh this is this is honestly what he told me sit in the in the line waiting there it's about three hour line i'm busy climbing the walls here in this in this clinic and he's telling me sit in the line there and 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 wait for your meds i'm having cold sweats i'm getting anxiety attacks this is a drug counselor appointed by the south african government one of their one of their programs And like I said to you guys, there was there was a time that I that I was so desperate, and I was because of the stigma attached to addiction, I was so outcasted from society. Yes, for sure, I was scared of myself because I didn't know what my next move was going to be. As soon as the drugs started wearing out, I didn't know know who I'm going to steal from, what I'm going to steal, and what I'm going to do to get my next fix. But I had that as an excuse. If it wasn't an illness, medical aid wouldn't pay for it. A person that has lost everything and carries on doing what they're doing has to be sick. But it wouldn't have been that easy for me to change. And it wasn't easy to change. And it's still not easy because it's an ongoing process. If there wasn't something that was life-threatening to me. I see the comments have gone a bit quiet there. Maybe I've hit a little bit close to home with some of these behaviors. Because I know not everybody's addicts. Or maybe, just maybe some people can relate, you know what I mean? I'll never judge another person the way addicts get judged. Never. Sorry, I'm not on the farm. I have to pour my own coke here tonight. That's why the inches aren't rolling. Because I'm at home, yeah? Blessed to be at home. Blessed to be able to be at home. Two cars, big TV, no debt. After coming out of 20 years of addiction, lots of debt, lots of loans, lots of no payback, lots of stealing. But how do I make amends to the people that I, that I never got a chance to make amends to? By helping the oak at the robots. Giving him a child, not looking down on him. Because that could be me standing there. It's only by the grace of God and the and the program of Raoul that I'm not standing there. Aren't these people somebody's kids? Why do we judge them so harshly? Haven't any of you been dirty before? I stopped at the robots and I gave a man something to eat. That's three of my friends that started off heroin together. Three out of the twelve. One of the three that is still alive. And many of them are dead because of Many of them couldn't come back into society because they were outcasted. And even when they did without drugs in them, when they made a mistake, when they made a mistake like most humans do, when they fell short, trying to get life right, it's a process for all of us. When they fell short, they were trampled on. They were called hopeless. I've been called all sorts of names. Waste of white skin. Waste of skin, whatever you want to call it. Gemos. That thing will amount to nothing. It's my greatest pleasure. And with the help of Mr. Wall, because he believed in me. Because you don't get judgment when you come into realm. Mm -hmm. 
Because would you listen to me the same if I had dirty clothes on? Dear Makai, hey, broken shoes. I tell the oaks that come into rail off the streets that, that my, my first time at rail, you guys now got broken service. My first time at rail, I came in there with two different shoes on. I had a new pair of shoes in the bag that was supplied by mommy. But she wouldn't give me anything. Anything. Not toiletries, not... Not toothbrushes, not any any new underwear, not any clothes, nothing. That my unemployed mother at the time organized for me. She wouldn't give me anything until the rail bucky pulled up here in front of my house to, to pick me up. Because she knew that, that giving that to me I could sell anything. Anything. She knew that I would have sold it. Now, people have so much to say about addicts. But we've got so much of our own behaviors that we hide. Maybe with, with, with addicts and addiction, it's just a little bit more visible. Maybe it's just a little bit more visible. That I was suffering from something that I didn't want to do anymore. And I always refer to it in this time like with the smokers. How many smokers that have been smoking for 10 years plus really want to be smokers? Man? Be honest with yourself tonight. The same as how many drug addicts out there this evening really want to still be drug, drug addicts. Why do we have to sleep outside our houses in our, in our cars when, okay, be, before we lose it? Why do, we, why do we have to see our partners? Why do we have to lose everything? And a bit more before we want to change. And I implore the addicts that are, that are in recovery. Isn't it us addicts sometimes in recovery that keeps that fail, dirty, gemoslik stigma attached to us through our actions? You know, I get, I get stopped in the, in the road here in Edge Me today. Not stopped. I was busy. I was making a U-turn, and uh, and the one the one car that I that I drive it's it's got a nice loud exhaust and whatever. But it's it's not fast. It's slow, and um, I know for a fact that uh, that I, I went about thirty because it was in a sort of a, a cul-de-sac. I was I was turning around, and um, and this lady stands in the middle of the road. And I can tell you, had this been a while ago, a couple of years ago. I would have driven straight into her. Or maybe I would have stopped next to her and behaved in, in a very ill way. And she tells me, what's going on with you? Why are you driving so fast? So I said to her, no, sorry, ma'am. This, this car is, it's, I'm not going fast. It just sounds very loud. So it sounds like it's fast. And um, I don't know if she was maybe having a bad day or whatever. But I could check. That her husband is standing right next to her and you can see how I'm approaching the situation because that's where every day I can see a little bit of change in myself. Because that would have been a while ago, I would have told her, hey, don't come and talk shit here, yeah, get back into your house and blah, 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 blah. But instead of starting an argument, I calmed the situation down and I said, like, ma'am, really, I haven't, uh, I wasn't driving fast yet. It's just a very loud car and, uh, you know, sorry, sorry if it's disturbed you. And I moved on. But if I had to feel the whole situation and the cops had to get involved, and I've got a nice relationship with the, with the police line, but as compared to what I used to have, 
I can tell you now that just because of my history and the possible one or two cops that don't, don't like me, just because of my background, they would have arrested me. Because it's happened before. That's the stigma that is attached to addicts. Do people think that it's easy getting onto your feet? Why do you think we wear our orange ribbons for for Rail Orange Friday? To remove the stigma. Now, you know, one thing I admire about Mr. Wallo is that he's a visionary. Visionary. He doesn't look at the person that's coming into the doors of rail with two different shoes and and a broken jeans and dirty clothes. There's an oak that came in there with women's clothes before because that's all he had left to wear. And uh, he doesn't see that product, man. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the water restrictions when you when you see dead grass and in your mind you can see that same place maybe like what is a soccer club you can see that same place with very green grass and the way it used to be I believe that that's what Mr. All sees when he when he when he look when he looks at the guys that comes through the doors I believe that's what that's what he believes and that is where my belief in other addicts and people have come from from Mr. Hall's teaching in that anybody can recover anybody it just takes a little bit of effort a little bit of getting human nature out of the way Putting your grudge list aside. And it's never that, that we, especially the guys that, that we sponsor, that we want them to do anything extra or whatever. But who would have been feeding them tonight if they weren't in the facility? Maybe Chantal Crocker because she reaches people far and wide and feeds a lot of people. But what would that man himself been doing? What has changed if we still just want handouts? Who would have been paying for that plate of food that that man's eating tonight? Or would he have just gone without? So isn't it his duty to humanity and to himself to put a little bit extra in to say thank you isn't that just normal there's quite a bit of people watching but I see you have all gone silent it's a bit of a scary topic when we realize that not only addicts have faults huh? And I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm not trying to start an argument. But I was taught to tell it like it is, man. What makes you a better person? Not you. Not you guys watching. But like, just ask yourself this. What makes you a better person than me because you haven't done drugs? Isn't the prostitute on the road somebody's daughter? Yeah, you know, it's 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 just what what struck me to get to this topic is that everybody wants to take the glory when the addict's doing well, but who wants to help him when he's not? People that can't deal with one addict in a household don't realize that our group and our leadership under Mr. Hall there on the farm deals with thirty. 
of these people 24 7 times a day remember you still got a break sometimes at home when when he was when he was getting drugs or when he was planning to steal something most of the time there was only a little bit of nagging and a little bit of lazy laziness and uh, I can't we, we we accept the 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 cheating and stealing and conning and all of that as well but those are the things that need to change in recovery man anybody can put the drugs down man all you need to do is make a theft case against him and get him locked up and most of the times uh, whoever's got drugs in the cell isn't going to share with him if it's his first few times that he's been there and you'll see that he can survive without it but in that time if nothing changes nothing's going to change And that is where Mr. Wall and Rail played a big part in it for me. Probably the biggest part. Because he didn't see the person with two different shoes, a broken pants, a dirty body, nothing material to give life. He wasn't looking for the benefit. I think maybe sometimes mm -hmm. Mr. Wall thinks of himself uh, self as a as an addict panel beater. You know, like a panel beater, like Graham. You see the car all smashed up when it comes in by the gates. Graham's already got that picture of how that car is going to look when it goes out of the gates. But once that car goes out of the gates, we can't guarantee that the driver isn't going to smash it again. And it's the same with an addict. It's the same with an addict. So my, my biggest thing, you know, is that many an addict has died because of the stigma attached to addiction. And I always try and use the example to people. And you can even think it in your mind as you speak. What do you think of if I, if I say the words pit bull or bull terrier to you? 90% of people think about these vicious, aggressive, rough dogs. But I can tell you something now. My own dog has changed that stigma to me. So we want to add addicts to society. We don't want them to, to be excluded. Oh, there's no inch. is a bit heavy now. Eh? Okay. But it's fine. Can go without anything. And that's what happens. Some guys, they come into the center. Must remember the drugs are down. It's all these escalated human traits that we're dealing with. Jealousy, anger, envy. Lust is a touchy subject. All these things. I know I was one myself that was big on resentment. The first, uh, first time I went into recovery... Mr. Wall told me resentment is the number one offender that can make you the most spiritually sick. My words to him was that I don't hold resentments once I've gotten somebody back. So I tried to find a glitch in the system. But who went to bed with that, that sickness at night? A long hit list, mulling it through what I'd like to do to people. I'm sure there's people that's gone to bed thinking the same of me. When they hit the power on their TV remote and they realize, hey, there's no TV. But what can I do about that now? I can only pay back society. Help the, the less fortunate. Carry the message. Try and help remove the stigma.
and be a better person going forward. None of us can change the past. But all of us, addict or not, can look at ourselves instead of looking at the next person. Start looking at yourself. This program of change that Rail offers that is developed through through Mr. Hall's own experience and, and, and you know, results speak in recovery. If it was about the money to Mr. Hall, then he'd make the program one month. 100,000 Rand for one month. I tell you now, Mr. Hall's mm-hmm. name is good mm-hmm. enough to do that. Oh no, even better, 21 days, 100 grand. But it's not about that. You can't watch the grass grow, go from brown to green in 21 days. And even once it's green, usually after about six months, it's green and it's nice. I'm talking about the oaks in recovery now. If they were grass, then there's still, every day there's weeds in between that need to be taken out. Every day. Every day there's weeds in between that grass that needs to be taken out. Otherwise, that grass starts dying. There's things that we don't have control over. Maybe I come out one morning. Mm -hmm. There's only so much routine that we can have. Maybe I come out of the complex one morning. And I turn into the petrol station and there's some idiot carrying on there. I can't change him, but I can change the way I respond or react to him or do to him. People st- should stop learning or should, should learn to stop giving other human beings your key. I can't control every single situation. Instead of judging everybody else, maybe sit back this evening and go through your own day. Go through your own life. Not fret on the on the past, but use it as a tool to learn from. So my main thing tonight was on removing the stigma because who is an addict? Is it the person that does drugs or is it the person that does everything that supposedly addicts do? Who's the worst person, the addict in recovery paying his debts? And making right or the person that's never touched drugs in their life that don't that 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 isn't paying their loans back who's the better person but who, who gets judged harshly who gets judged more harshly want everybody to take a thing tonight about their own circumstances and situation and who they really are we can only correct our own wrongs I can't stand the addict being judged no problem obviously when I used to pull up at the family functions I used to see everybody going like this and I used to think maybe wherever I'm standing They can't see and the sun is shining in their eyes and they want to see me so badly because I thought I was that important. But they were skimming, oh goodness, here comes this ache. But that's the reputation I, I, I built up for myself. And people and addicts need to understand that our past behavior, addict or not, doesn't disappear overnight so this evening thank god that i'm recovered just for today 
thank you, Mr. Wall, for, for everything that you've that you've taught me and that I can sit here this evening. That I can sit here and that I'm not in a box. I check out they dig in graves like crazy now. But I can promise you addiction kills more people annually than what this COVID does. And you know what kills kills people in addiction, not the drugs. It's people that judge them, it's people that put them down, people that say they can never make it, people that give up on addicts. I will never give up on an addict. Never. So if there are any addicts that this reaches, if you don't have a phone or some kind of internet connection, hopefully a mother or parent or loved one or somebody can show you this and just know that I come from robbing people, conning people, maxing out other people's credit cards stealing other people's things a lot of it all the time breaking into people's houses and a lot of other things that go with addiction like i didn't mention they're using a lot of drugs and if this as much as reaches you in any kind of way that means that you too can recover. Hopefully this can remove the stigma that goes along with addiction. As I get so many people messaging me nowadays that wouldn't spit on me. But I still won't say no if they want or need help. People that still have cars, people that 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 thought the drugs wouldn't get to them. But how much do you honestly have in your life? I tell you, it's so amazing to see see Richie as an as an inspiration. That uh, I know his story a little bit more in depth, the way he tells it. Because certain things you just can't say on live uh, videos. And he shared with me that he's come from less than nothing. This was after I came back to Rail and uh, after my broken service when I stopped listening to Mr. Hall and almost died. Richie was one of the sober living members there. And he was working hard at the time. Check this out, always busy. He's working a job, he's up in the morning at half past five, he's, he's uh, giving back, he's, he's doing, the, doing the Oaks Pup, doing early morning devotions, or like parts of the program that we run there at Trail, um, running the transport to the guys that work in the town, doing that. I think he just started wrestling at the time as well, doing all of that. And there was many nights that you could just see in his eyes, that he'd ask himself, where's all this going to? And to see where he's at now, I'm sure Mr. Hall could see where it was going to. And all we need to do is, is trust our sponsor and trust the person that's been through it. Because I can tell you now that his picture that he's living today is a whole lot different to the picture that was in his mind when he walked in there. I hope this evening I can carry a message of hope to the parents of the still suffering addicts. Whether they are robots, whether they are stealing from you, whether whatever they are doing, they are fueling something that I believe is straight out of the pit of hell. So, you know, thank you all for listening this evening. 
I wanted to get a little bit more personal, but all I want you to do is ask yourself, can I admit my wrongs? Can I change or correct my wrongs and do what's expected of an addict in recovery to do? Because it's not the drugs we're recovering from. It's the bad behavior. It's the things. Remember, addicts have also been wronged. It's the things that have been done to us over the years. It's all the guilt of the things that we wouldn't do if the drugs weren't there. That some people do that aren't on drugs. So it's all out of gratitude this evening for my life and for what the rail organization and Mr. Hall has personally done for me. I've never, ever, ever seen Mr. Hall deal with somebody that wants to walk the extra mile that he's not willing to walk the extra mile with. And he digs to lead the way because he's been there. And I've never, ever seen anybody lead so many people to recovery with results that last and can't. So I ask everybody this evening, check out our Rail Orange Friday pages. Who knows? The addict that the robot may find recovery and mm -hmm. might be helping people someday like me. An addict saved by grace. And by somebody that was willing to put the time and effort into me. To give me a second chance at life. Thank you Mr. Wall. Thank you everybody for watching. I ask you to share this message and I hope that it could save a life. Good evening. God bless.